And welcome, folks, to the Not Mike and Mike show. My name is Brian Nelson, alongside my co-host, Mike McLeod, everyone's favorite ninja and your least favorite ninja here with a 2016 fantasy football show for you. And we're going to break down our top 10 at each position and give you a sleeper and a bust potential to help you with your draft mm -hmm. in the upcoming weeks. And Mike, uh, long summer off, but yeah. we're back and yeah. we're back with uh, some fantasy. And it's good because we're going to have a weekly show now, or at least try to be weekly. So um, I guess we should get right into it. We don't got a lot of time. So why don't we start with uh, quarterbacks? We got top 10 quarterbacks. We're going to go 10 to 1. Uh, so because we all know that Cam Newton and Aaron Rodgers, like they're going to be the guys that you pick. But Tony Romo, he's a guy that is eventually going to get hurt. He already pulled his back in the preseason. Uh, but Tony Romo is still a guy that can put up numbers. Uh, so I like him if he can stay healthy. Uh, we'll get to him a little bit later as well. Uh, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, kind of the same guy. Russell Wilson probably will have a breakout year, um, if you can call a sixth year a breakout year. Uh, <laughs> I mean, in terms of fantasy numbers, definitely, because he was known as a game manager, an Alex Smith type. But mm -hmm. then last year when Marshawn Lynch got injured, it really gave them an opportunity to shift their offense and give a focus to Russell Wilson in the passing game. and. People like Doug Baldwin, uh, fantasy-wise, got a big jump in production points, and as did Russell Wilson, which put him in our top ten at number nine. Yeah, and then uh, you, you keep looking up the list. Blake Bortles, sneakily, fourth best quarterback in terms of fantasy last year, and that was because they were always behind, and they're going to be a little bit better this year. I think they're actually going to win some games, so maybe be, that's why we put him at seventh instead of you know maybe top five, just because he's going to be able to run the ball a little bit more. Carson Palmer, he's getting up there in years, but he can still sling the rock. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, kind of the same deal. Uh, when you have Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell on your team, you're going to have a good year. Tom Brady, he is uh, suspended for four weeks, but he's still Tom Brady. Like, yeah. You still got to take him. And in terms of fantasy production, I think that suspension is going to help some mm -hmm. owner because they're going to get him at a great value lower in the draft where Tom Brady could go. You can see him go... Third, fourth, fifth. Sixth I was round. thinking like seventh, eighth. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in a normal yeah, yeah, year yeah, where yeah. he wasn't suspended, but oh, suspended. Oh, yeah, he'd be like a third round guy. Yeah, so in this situation where he's suspended for four games, you're going to get him at a great value, and you're going to get higher uh, positional value mm -hmm. at wide receiver mm -hmm. and running back with Tom Brady. So Tom Brady would definitely be on my radar in the sixth, seventh, eighth round. I mean, we're talking to a guy that years ago took. Josh Gordon in like the ninth round. He didn't play until like week ten. Yeah, that and that's it, impatience. <laughs> you want to wait four weeks for a uh, top of the line quarterback? That's nothing compared to Mike here, who endured a long Josh Gordon suspension for. How how did that work out for you? You know, he got like forty points the week he came back, and then he got hurt. So you know, it was a good it was a good week. Week eleven, I won that game. And then top yeah. three quarterbacks are going to be Andrew Luck, who's coming off of a pretty disappointing season mm -hmm. for Andrew Luck. And he doesn't have the same offensive line. He always is going to have issues there. But Andrew Luck's just talent. We can see that he will probably have a bounce back year. We're going to bet on the fact that Andrew Luck's not going to have back-to-back -back bad years. Or, I mean, Matt Hasselbeck. <laughs> so, either one. And so top two, Aaron Rodgers, Cam Newton. I think Cam Newton really establishes himself as the top fantasy quarterback with his ability to run yep. and rush, rushing touchdowns. That's the real big difference between he and Aaron Rodgers, which is why he's our top fantasy quarterback for 2016. So let's move over to the running back position and show you our top ten running backs. At number ten, we have the Tampa Bay back, Doug Martin. Latavius Murray in at number nine. What really distinguishes distinguishes Murray from Martin for you? Uh, just, I think the Raiders are going to be really good this year. I think they're going to have some leads late in games where they're just going to have to run the ball and run out the clock. I think Tampa Bay is going to be in a lot of games. They think they're going to rely on Jameis Winston really a lot to keep them in ball games and potentially come back late in the fourth quarter. You're not going to see too much of, uh, oh, in the second half, let's just run out the clock. So Latavius Murray, he's the only guy there. He's going to be taking a lot of third-down duties as well. DeAndre Washington is more of a uh, receiving back slash special teams sort of special package guy. So Latavius Murray is the guy there. 
And then at eight and seven, Matt Forte, Jamal Charles, two guys who are getting up there in age mm -hmm. but have been fantasy stalwarts their entire career, we still believe that they are uh, top ten He's still situations. the Jamal cost. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, he, he, did, he is coming off of uh, ACL or Achilles? I can't remember. I think it was a knee injury. Yeah, it was ACL or something like that. Uh, so, uh, Charcanic West, good uh, handcuff to pick up. But... Jamal Charles can still run the ball really, really well. And Matt Forte, getting fantasy points is his forte. And if you want to pick up his handcuff, Bilal Powell is the guy for you. Uh, let's go up to four through six. These are the young backs that have broken through that we expect to have good sophomore campaigns and Todd Gurley and David Johnson, as well as the rookie Ezekiel Elliott. What can you say about these three individuals? I really pushed for David Johnson to be as high as he was. We originally had him like eighth or ninth, but... You see what happened in Arizona last year, and he really, that, that, that is an offense that likes to spread it around and likes to pass a lot, and he's a guy that can catch. He has good hands, he has soft hands, and he, when he gets out in open space, he can make a lot happen. So he's a guy I'm really looking forward to. I even have him higher on this list, especially because Le'Veon Bell is suspended for three games, but uh, Ezekiel Elliott, if he does anything close to what he did in Ohio State, it's going to be a good year. Yeah, and behind that line, best offensive line in the league in Dallas. We saw what kind of production Darren McFadden had. And yeah. what, can, when can you, can you say Darren McFadden had production in the NFL? Rookie year. Okay. Yeah. Not in, well, and then Dallas, we saw Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, and the center Travis Frederick behind that stellar line. Lael Collins, yeah. the first round pick that they got as an unrestricted free agent because he had a controversy <laughs> that everybody stayed away from yeah. and he found to be innocent. So that really benefited their offensive line. And Ezekiel Elliott at Ohio State was a difference maker. And the way that Jason Garrett and we talked about Tony Romo's injury history, the way to protect a quarterback is with a strong running game. Yeah. So their philosophy is really to run the rock. And with Ezekiel Elliott coming in, People anticipate some big fantasy numbers from him. Mm -hmm. He, uh, on the other hand, has some handcuffs with Alfred Morris, who's gotten the bulk of the carries. Yep. And this morning, Ezekiel Elliott has some controversy on TMZ Sports where they spotted him at a marijuana shop. I mean, he just needs to medicate. It's fine. <laughs> he's anticipating the pains that are coming <laughs> with all the 300-plus carries he's about to you know, receive. I would need some, too, if I had to deal with Des Bryant the entire time. And let's not mention, forget to mention Dog Gurley, too. Yeah, yeah. He's going to get a lot of production with the rookie quarterback, Jared Goff, and Case Keenum. And Case Keenum, you're not going to rely on his arm to try and win you games. <laughs> so Todd Gurley's going to get a bulk of carries, and he should endure a lot of production value. But he's not enough to get in our top three. Le'Veon Bell, who's suspended only three games now mm -hmm. after getting his suspension reduced, is at number three. Adrian Peterson, number two, and Devontae Freeman, your boy, who helped you get very far in our fantasy league yep. at not, number one. Not win the, not win the championship. Hey, so. uh, hey. It's all about chips for me. <laughs> I don't care about the regular season. But yeah, let, let's make no mistake. Le'Veon Bell is still the top fantasy running back in the NFL. But he is suspended for three games. It's the same uh, thing as Tom Brady. You'd pick him first if he was available, but you don't want to spend your first round pick, potentially your number one or number two pick, on a guy that's not going to show up until week four. So we have him like third, it's a good nice round number, he's still going to give you a good 13 weeks of production, but he's not going to give you that first three to get you off to a really good start. Uh, Adrian Peterson still Adrian Peterson, like I don't, I don't think I have to, if I have to explain to you why Adrian Peterson's a good running back, then you shouldn't be playing fantasy football. <laughs> Uh, and Devontae Freeman, I actually want to kind of preface it by saying that a lot of people have him labeled as a bust, but he was so good last year that you can't avoid it. But technically, Tevin Coleman is the better back. He's the stronger of the two, he's the bigger of the two, and he's technically the faster of the two. He just didn't have the position because he kept getting hurt. So all things being equal, they probably want to go with Tevin Coleman in Atlanta. But... We all know that some things aren't equal. Yeah. And let's go over to wide receiver now with our top 10 wide receiver list for the upcoming fantasy football season. A stalwart at number 10, Brandon Marshall. He got his quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, mm -hmm. back. And so if Geno Smith was going to be the starting quarterback, I don't know if Brandon Marshall makes the top 10 list. Yeah, no, he probably doesn't. But, you know, he has that bet going on with Antonio Brown, who's going to get more yards. So he's going to be at least a little bit 
uh, motivated to go out and catch some passes. All the motivation in the world can't <laughs> equate to <laughs> Antonio Brown's production as you see him at the top of our list, but we'll get to him in yeah. a second. Number nine, Amari Cooper. We project him to be a number one, obviously, with the Oakland Raiders. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he got over 100 catches this year, uh, just because I think that they're going to be in a lot more games. It's going to be a really high-scoring offense. Uh, and, you know, he was a rookie and he caught 80-something passes last year. I think so. Oakland has the prototypical top-heavy fantasy lineup where they have a top quarterback, a top running back, two top receivers, and not a lot after that. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of things you look for in fantasy where, you, where Green Bay, they distribute all over. Yeah. So a lot of their times, their teammates take away from their production. But with Oakland, the two main guys are going to be Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, and that's pretty much it. And I actually completely didn't even realize that we don't have Derek Carr on this top 10 quarterback list. Uh, I would slot him in above Tony Romo Okay. Now, now that I'm thinking about it. We didn't do too much research. So that little asterisk uh, around Tony <laughs> Romo, that's insert Derek Carr instead <laughs> or, of... Or uh, Dak Prescott. Anyway, <laughs> um, moving on, Julian Elliman, A.J. Green. A.J. Green's potentially a top five guy. It's just there's a lot going on in Cincinnati. Hugh Jackson's new philosophy... Uh, and uh, we got a bunch of people leaving. So Yeah, his teammates went up and left him. Marvin yeah. Jones went to Detroit. Mohamed Sanu went to Atlanta. Tyler Eifert is hurt, which will help uh, A.J. Green's production, you would mm -hmm. think. But that's a target away from him, and now they can here. focus all their attention on A.J. Green. Maybe a sleeper. It's a little early for sleepers. They signed Brandon LaFell to be their number two back. <sighs> and LaFell. they drafted Tyler Boyd in the second round yeah. out of Pittsburgh, who got... Uh, touchdown in the preseason last year from Andy Dalton. So maybe those two are on the lookout. But A.J. Green, his talent is too good and not to put him in top ten. Marvin Jones and Muhammad Sanu weren't exactly world beaters. No. And they won't be in the new places. <laughs> Why well, they're not on our top ten. Number six, DeAndre Hopkins, not Holmes. Uh, a little nice. typo there. Uh, but DeAndre, he has a new quarterback in yeah. Brock Osweiler. How do you anticipate that new relationship? I mean, he's, he was a top three guy last year. But and he did it with four quarterbacks that I don't even know if are in the league anymore. Ryan Hoyer, Brandon Whedon, all, all those all guys. The, all the Cleveland quarterbacks. Yeah. So, I mean, Brock Osweiler could be an upgrade over them, but he could also be a downgrade. We saw him do kind of mediocre in four games last year, and he got... A big contract, he has nothing to play for anymore. So. Yeah, with the huge wide receivers and Demarius Thomas and <laughs> Emmanuel Sanders, if you can't put up fantasy production with those guys, DeAndre Hopkins might be somebody who is a little, has a down year after having his breakout year last year. But we will see. Number five, we have Des Bryant. We almost forgot to put Des yeah. in our top ten. We were like nine guys. Who's the tenth guy? Oh, Des Bryant. And his production is going to be affected by the quarterback situation yep. with Tony Romo's injury to his back. We'll see how serious that is. But Dak Prescott lit it up in the preseason. So perhaps and Des Bryant you still know, the, top The five. number one guy on an offense of the skill position is going to be the favorite target of a new quarterback. So Tony Romo loves Des Bryant. Dak Prescott should love Des Bryant. It's a match made in heaven. And number four, my cousin Jordy, Jordy Nelson. Yeah. Uh, speaking of favorite targets, Aaron Rodgers gets his back after a knee injury last year. Just getting back into the swing of things, playing in his first preseason game. We'll see how that affects his ability to separate because that was a big issue last year with Green Bay. Mm -hmm. Randall Cobb, uh, James Jones, um, Devontae Adams, they couldn't separate. Yeah, the, it, it just relied a lot on Aaron Rodgers having to thread a lot of passes. And, and so, Jordan also just got breakaway speed. He can just get away from people. Yeah, and with a knee injury, we'll see if he loses a step. We don't anticipate him losing one. He, he should be a top pick in your upcoming fantasy draft. Odell Beckham Jr. at number three, really, with the Giants. He's been a fantasy stalwart since he's yeah. been in the league. Uh, coming out of nowhere, he missed the, out of his, nowhere. Yeah, his rookie year. He was injured to start out with, and he blew up on the scene. has been... Consistent ever since. Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, your two and your one. I think the top three are pretty. A lot of people sad. have Odell second, but Julio Jones had over 200 yards a game for like six weeks, and so you just can't take anything away from that. Nothing's really changed in Atlanta, so it's kind of the same situation. I expect the same sort of production. And let's kind of take a break from the list and yeah. kind of talk about philosophy. In a PPR league, where you have your first round pick, do you use it on a top wide receiver or do you use it on a running back? I mean, we, we're getting to that at the end, the tips and tricks of the trade, but 
it, it's just best available for me. I got like a top ten list of guys, like the, my first round, and if like Julio Jones is always like a top three guy for me. It goes Antonio Brown, up until this year, Le'Veon Bell, and then Julio Jones. And so if any of those three guys are available, no matter where I am, I'm picking those guys. And you know who's in a lot of top ten lists? It's the guy at the top of our tight end list for 2016. So let's. Bring you the tight end list, Rob Gronkowski at number one, but at number ten, Gary Barnage came out of nowhere with Cleveland. It's going to have a lot of production issues with Robert Griffin III being the starting quarterback. We don't know necessarily how well he's going to do in that new role in Cleveland, but Gary Barnage, he didn't have much help in Cleveland last year, and he did what he did last year. And there you see a preview of our defense coming up. We'll kick it back over the tight end list, hopefully, pretty soon. Number nine, Martellus Bennett. Uh, the pickup by the New England Patriots, mm. we've seen what they can do with two tight ends in the past. We don't know what he's going to be, though. Is he going to be Tim Wright, who was a bust out of uh, Tampa Bay, or is he going to be Aaron Hernandez, you know, without the murder? Only thing Martellus Bennett is going to be murdering is opposing safeties. <laughs> <laughs> and if uh, I, I think he's a good pick. Yeah, I think he's a good pick, too. Number eight is Kobe Fleener, another good free agent signing by the New Orleans Saints to pick up for the departing Ben Watson who went to the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, and Ben Watson wasn't anything special, but before him it was Jimmy Graham. Mm -hmm. So there's a history of tight ends doing well in New Orleans. Also, a lot of targets left um, New Orleans. Not only did Ben Watson leave, but Marcus Colson got cut. Yep. They didn't really, really, re, re, eh, really replace him with anything. They're going to rely on Willie Sneed, the Brandon Coleman. Willie Sneed! Yeah, to get the production that New Orleans is used to, as well as Brandon Cooks. So, mm -hmm. Kobe Fleener should get a lot of opportunity now that he's the one and only tight end, not splitting time with Dwayne Allen back in, in uh, Indianapolis. Yeah. Number seven, Zach Ertz is a guy I really project to do big things with the coaching change in Philadelphia. Their new coach is the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, and their tight end is number two on our list. So, I think that sort of philosophy can translate over with Philadelphia and have Zach Ertz have a pretty big year this year. And Carson Wentz is going to be starting at some point this year, and the old saying goes, tight ends are a rookie quarterback's best friend. So big target, especially in the red zone, he, he's going to have a good year. Number six, Delaney Walker. I think he's going to also have a big year because of the talent around Tennessee getting Derrick Henry in the draft and trading for DeMarco Murray. They're going to feature a very run-heavy offense. Marcus Mariota is play action Jesus. <laughs> it seems that all they do is play action passes, and Delaney Walker down the middle is a pretty good target and is definitely his best weapon in Tennessee. You know, I, I've always avoided Delaney Walker. I don't know why. I always considered him to be a blocking tight end, and then like a year or two ago, he just all of a sudden gets like 14 points a game. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, and that's why he is verging on our top five. He could be in our top five if it weren't for Tyler Eifert's breakout year. Now, this is another caveat where Tyler Eifert's dealing with an injury. So it's going to be a risky pick for you in your fantasy draft. But should you pick him, we talked about the weapons leaving uh, Cincinnati. Tyler Eifert is definitely the number two option there. So as tight ends go in a class that's very spread out and very not too top heavy, Tyler Eifert is definitely a player that can separate you in your week-to-week -week, uh, gameplay. Yeah, like Rob Gronkowski and Travis Kelsey, they're going to be gone in the first three or four rounds. But then you don't see a lot of people take tight ends until, like, maybe the ninth. And so there you still have Greg Olson, Jordan Reed, Tyler Eifert, and it's just kind of pick whatever one you fancy at the time. And Jordan Reed is our number four pick. He became the favorite target of Kirk Cousins as the year progressed. I think we can see that sort of relationship translating to the 2016 mm. season. Greg Olson, his production is going to take a hit with the returning Kelvin Benjamin, but his talent and the propensity of Cam Newton to go to his tight end in crucial, crucial situations on third down, that is going to give him some production that you can count on week in, week in and week out. Yeah, uh, this list for me is PPR because if you are on a non-PPR league and you're really touchdown dependent, Greg Olson's not a top three guy because he's not going to get as many looks in the red zone, especially with Kelvin Benjamin. There's going to be a lot of fade routes, so you're not going to see to him at, featured as much in the red zone. But Travis Kelsey... Uh, Rob Gronkowski, they've established themselves as the cream of the crop in terms of the tight end production. So 
And to go back to your Cam Newton, uh, the Panthers point with the, them in the red zone, what's the best play for the Panthers in the red zone? Cam Newton up the middle. That's why Cam Newton's your, your number one fantasy quarterback, not necessarily throwing to his tight end in the red zone to get you six points. Cam mm -hmm. Newton's going to get those six points with his legs. Yep. Now the final kind of area we're going to focus on is the defense and special teams. Uh, this one's kind of tough for me. I, defenses change as a whole. Yeah. You can kind of anticipate players how they do from year to year, but whole defenses, chemistry is an issue, new players coming in is an issue. Here is our top 10 list starting at number 10, Buffalo, with the Ryan brothers reuniting to hopefully get Buffalo's defense. I think one big factor, though, is their two top rookies in the first and second round are out with injuries. Shaq Lawson is hurt, Reggie Ragland injured his knee, he's going to be out for the year. So it's going to, you're not going to get help from your new young players in Buffalo, but that scheme should yeah. be a top 10 defense. Yeah, they're going to blitz a lot, they're going to get in the backfield a lot, and up-tempo offenses might have an opportunity to feast on Buffalo, but more traditional offenses are going to have trouble dealing with uh, Buffalo's uh, blitz packages. New York Jets, uh, we originally had five teams on the list because we couldn't think of anything, and I just started listing off names. And, <laughs> I mean, the New York Jets front seven is still solid. They're still not to be uh, trifled with. And there, there are secondary changes from year to year, and it's always kind of like just a step above mediocre. But you're not going to run the ball very effectively. You're going to be one-dimensional against the Jets, but... You know, it's still going to be tough going. Yeah, Jets aren't going to get you a ton of interception points, but they could get a lot of sack points, yep. and they're going to keep the point total low, so you get those guaranteed points mm -hmm. with a certain point range with the New York Jets. Oakland Raiders, they should have an emerging defense with, especially the teams they play with, I think is a big factor. Not the greatest offensive lines. Yeah. So with Khalil Mack and the new addition with Bruce Irvin, those two edge rushers should get a lot of sack points for the Oakland Raiders, and the improved secondary should get some turnovers. Uh, Reggie Nelson, Sean Smith, you're going to have a lot of guys that are ball hawks, a lot of guys that can shut people down. So now all of a sudden you can't run the ball because you got Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin. You can't pass the ball because you got Sean Smith and Reggie Nelson. What do you do? You just hold the ball and you hope you don't get sacked. You know what you do? You draft Oakland in your fantasy draft. Next <clears throat> is number yes. seven, LA Rams. They, speaking of pass rushes, Robert Quinn, Aaron Donald, that's the preeminent front four, I think. You talk yeah. about front sevens. Front four, LA Rams definitely have that. They are going to take a hit in the secondary with the loss of Janoris Jenkins going to the New York Giants, but they should still be a solid defense for you to pick and up. And they do play the 49ers twice. So. That's definitely going to be great Sorry. for their fantasy production. And Tavon Austin on special teams. You don't think of special teams too often yeah, when it comes to true. defense and special teams. Tavon Austin on this list, probably the best kick returner out of any of the teams on the top ten. Now let's go to six, Houston, J.J. Watt. The Houston J.J. Watts. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're really not the Houston Texans when it comes to the, uh, the defense. And I think his health is the reason why I was hesitant to put them in the top 10. Mm -hmm. He's coming off of surgery. He's not going to play in the preseason at all. We're not going to sh be sure early on how the Houston defense does. I would maybe stay away from them drafting them and then picking them up later on as the season progresses. I almost always go two defenses. So I'd pick up one of the top three, and then you can get Houston maybe at a discount. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't even draft them because nobody drafts anybody in the late rounds. They just make uh, joke picks and pick <laughs> up Marshawn Lynch in the 19th. Uh, so Houston's still going to be good. They're not going to be good at first, but J.J. Watt still is a three-time Defensive Player of the Year. He's still going to have a good year. All right, Kansas City is the beginning of our top five with Justin Houston's pass rush rushing ability. They're going to take a hit with Sean Smith going to mm -hmm. Oakland from Kansas City. But Marcus Peters, he was one of the top interception leaders yep. in his rookie year. He should still be able to generate turnovers for the Kansas City defense. Seattle at number four. Schematically, they're one of the soundest defenses. They have great chemistry. They keep their players in the Legion of Boom year in, year out. You're going to get at least an interception a game or a forced fumble, and those are the same amount of points unless you got some weird scoring. So they're going to generate a lot of turnovers. They're going to they're gonna give up big plays, I think, because they're so uh, ball hockey. Mm -hmm. But when it happens, it happens. Yeah, they're going to take a lot of risks. So that's why we don't have them in our top three. Carolina, the... Super Bowl defense from the NFC coming back. They're going to lose Josh Norman to Washington Redskins, so that's going to hurt their interception production. But with Luke Keekley, his ability to force fumbles and that front seven is very sound. I think they're going to hold defenses 
uh, excuse me, opposing offenses to the lowest amount of points. So uh, yeah. they're going to definitely be in that point category of being your consistent defense. And I think for defenses, one of the best things in fantasy is just being reassured that, mm -hmm. hey, I can just put this defense in there week in, week out. They're going to get me my solid 8, 10 points. And you don't have to worry about the matchup like, oh, uh, Panthers are playing Green Bay this week. Do I really want to play them? Yeah, you do. Yeah, every matter. single time. Top two, Arizona and Denver. What can you say about these two defenses, Mike? Uh, I mean, Denver is losing Malik Jackson to Jacksonville, but they still have Von Miller back now, and uh, they're still the reason why Peyton Manning has a second ring. Mm -hmm. they're, they're still just incredible in terms of the defense. And Arizona, last year, at the end of the year, a lot of people got hurt. Uh, Tyron Matthew, uh, I think it was an Achilles injury. I don't yeah, it's a lower him. leg injury, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he's back. Uh, you got a lot of guys returning, and now Patrick Peterson, you don't really have to talk about him. He kind of speaks for himself. It's going to be a lot of big-name people on both of those defenses that you can recognize right off the bat. Yeah. And so we, we ran the risk of driving you off with a list of 10 defenses. So we weren't going to do a list of 10 kickers for you. So <laughs> you go to sleep right away or tune the channel or go off of YouTube or however yeah. you're watching this. Uh, so, kickers, Mike, what do you say about kickers? Do you have a guy that you really target? Yeah, uh, so I just take the list, right? I take the list, and I just close my eyes, and I pick Shane Graham. That, it doesn't matter. It, just, it always lands on Shane Graham? Yeah, I don't know why. Man. It, no, uh, it just, just pick one. They're all the same. See, uh, for me... Pat Zaro for uh, Arizona. He was, good, he was good last year. For me, I always go... I'm, I'm always riskier. I always go Goskowski high. I'm always the first one to pick a kicker, and it's always Steven Goskowski. Uh, Steven Goskowski in the fourth round. Oh, yeah, it's a solid pick because, like I said with the defenses, for me, I like to just plug in the kicker, know he's going to be there every single week. I, I like I'm, to mix and match. I, I don't even draft a kicker. I, always, I know you don't. Because there's always a guy like, oh, you, you mean Janikowski's still available? I don't know. I mean, like for me, I don't know why you don't wait till the last round and pick one because you're going to have to drop somebody eventually. Yeah. So, like, if I'm on the fence between two guys that I want to start week one, whoever I don't start, I'll drop for a kicker. Okay. I mean, it's like the fourth guy. It's like my flex position, so. And see, if you don't want to have to debate yourself mentally, you can just go with me and just pick Steven Goskowski in the fifth, you know? <laughs> And, you know, we're kind of short on time. We were going to have two segments about sleepers and busts, but yeah. let's give the folks quickly, who is your sleeper pick, who is your bust to try and avoid in your fantasy draft? Uh, so we kind of mentioned his name. Sleeper, Dak Prescott. He's lighting it up in the preseason. I don't know how well that translates to actual first-string defenses, but he is 39 of 50 uh, with five touchdowns, no interceptions through two games. And so he's going to do well, and Tony Romo is going to get hurt, so he's a good guy to have. Uh, bust, Jordan Matthews. You talked about uh, the offensive coordinator for Kansas City coming in. Uh, did Jeremy Macklin do well in Kansas City, by yeah, chance? He actually did. Oh, well. Yeah, he, but he was the only one, and Jordan Matthews is not Jeremy Macklin. Yeah. He's a possession receiver. He's like the Adam Conleys of the world that, <laughs> do, that don't do anything. They, he is the prototypical Kansas City wide receiver of two years ago. Yeah. But they didn't get a single touchdown reception out of a lot of them. And so is... Dwayne Bowe. Yeah, he's Dwayne Bowe, folks. <laughs> Jordan Matthews is Dwayne Bow. Avoid him. And it, who else is his wide receiver tandem? Ruben Randall. <laughs> Ruben Randall is I not going to... I Ruben Randall once, like, <laughs> three years ago. Yeah, and how did that work out for and you? Not well. Yeah. Ruben Randall and Jordan Matthews, just avoid the, the lot of them. Yeah. You know, I'm going to pick two wide receivers as my bus to stay away Go from, on. and that's the Denver wide receivers. Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, you are great. Yeah. You are terrific quarter. Uh, you are terrific wide receivers. You don't have a terrific quarterback. Yeah. You have Mark Sanchez, the butt fumbler. You have Trevor, Trevor Simeon, who they call Long Balls. You know. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that. that's his nickname, and they're not going to get anywhere near his Long Balls because they are going to swarm him. That yeah. offensive line is very terrible, very patchworked. They're going to get a lot of pressure from the Oakland defense, Kansas mm -hmm. City's defense. If Joey Bosa ever signs with San Diego, he maybe he <laughs> the San Diego defense can get to him. But Come a lot Oakland, of production a lot of production is going to be we'll hit you. in Denver with their shoddy quarterback play and their offensive line woes. And for my sleeper pick, yeah. I think Mike Evans for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was mm -hmm. trying to look for a player who was like DeAndre Hopkins, where I thought he was a solid number two and can make that next jump up to be your number one fantasy receiver. I think Mike Evans, a lot of people are projecting Jameis Winston as a quarterback to make the next leap up. Yeah. And I think that, as a result, 
you're going to see Mike Evans take that leap as well. Vincent Jackson on the decline as he ages into his mid-30s. And there's no other really option. Austin Safarian Jenkins, yeah. he's not getting any production as well. Mike Evans. We saw what he did with Johnny Manziel. He made Johnny Manziel a first-round quarterback That's pick. True. Mike true. Evans is the p person to pick up as a sleeper in your fantasy draft. So I think, Mike, that does it for our 2016 fantasy show. I got one more thing. Okay, go ahead. Don't pick a quarterback early. Wait until, like, the sixth or seventh round. We have a list, top ten quarterbacks. You have Carson Palmer and Blake Bortles, who are top five guys in fantasy at the quarterback position, as sixth and seventh. You do not have to reach and take Aaron Rodgers in the first round unless you have some weird point system where it's like if you get over 200 yards, you get 17 points. Then you start taking quarterbacks early. But you have a good eight, nine people that you can take and not have to worry about 10 if you include Derek Carr. And you, at most, you have 10 guys in your league. Maybe 12, and then you're just, you know what you're doing. You don't need to listen to me. So there's 10 guys, 10 guys in your league. You're going to have a good quarterback. I promise you. Don't go chasing quarterbacks. Stick to the rivers and the lux that you're used to. Great TLC reference to wrap up this show. That's why you're everyone's favorite ninja, at least favorite ninja here with the Not Mike and Mike show. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned next week for whatever we have planned. We don't really know, but yeah, we'll it will be it sure to be entertaining, sure to make you laugh, and it will be all about sports on the Not Mike and Mike show.